Hi, my name is Francisca and I'm a microbiology PhD student in Dr. Doug Lake's lab at Arizona State University. And today I'm gonna to go over a valley fever diagnostic tool that our lab has developed. So valley fever or coccidioidomycosis is a fungal infection that primarily infects mammalian hosts. In the soil, it exists as mycelia, which contain arthrokinidia that can become easily dislodged and aerosolized and then inhaled. In the host, the fungus transforms into its parasitic form, known as spherules, and causes disease. Symptoms are nonspecific, meaning it can resemble a multitude of illnesses. So it's really important with this disease to have a quick and accurate diagnosis. As you can see on this slide, this is not the case. So diagnosis is often delayed and even missed because of it. A majority of these diagnostics, which I'm not really gonna go into, are antibody-based. And this means they rely on the host to mount an immune response. There are some antigen-based diagnostics that exist, but their sensitivity is quite low. So there really is this, this need for a better diagnostic that looks for actual elements of the fungus instead of response to the fungus, but needs to be both sensitive and specific. So our lab has developed an antigen-based assay using an in-house produced monoclonal antibody. This antibody is incubated with a specimen of interest, in our case, human serum, then added to a plate that is coated with recombinantly produced endokinase 1 or CTS1. And CTS1 is a highly immunogenic protein that's made by the valley fever fungus. So if this protein were to be present in serum, this antibody would bind that protein and would not be able to bind the protein in the plate, and this would produce low signal and indicate infection with valley fever. If, if no protein is present, that we won't bind anything here, it will bind in the plate and produce high signal. This will produce a standard curve along the lines of this, where we can map um, concentration of CTS1 to an um, optical density value and then back calculate if we found CTS1 in human serum. We recently published a paper on this assay um, describing its utility in detection of valley fever in human serum. And as you can see from the graphs at the bottom, there's this huge range of, of detectable CTS1 in human serum. But more importantly, um, our assay appears to be both sensitive and specific. So it has huge diagnostic potential. As mentioned earlier, there is no one test to diagnose valley fever definitively on its own that's both sensitive and specific. But the test we have developed appears to have this potential. So it's very important that um, this research continues.